What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 39 of Autodesk Confusion. So today we're working on drawing three and activity one, two, four on the IED curriculum. What I'm going to do is make this part, and we're also going to make the drawing file of it, and then dimension it as well. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly, and so if you want to need to, you can go back. Um, but what I'm going to do is just get rolling right away. So what I've done is I've insert a screenshot of that drawing file from uh, the PLTW website. You should have this card in your hand while you're building this part. I've changed my active units to inches. And then let's get rolling. So first thing I'm going to do is create a sketch on this work plane. And I'm going to draw a rectangle. So I'm going to click the R key on my keyboard for rectangle. Click center rectangle. I like using this one because it automatically dimensions my rectangle to not move while I'm throwing in my dimensions. So we have a two by two rectangle. I guess that'd be a square at that point. And then I'm gonna hit the C key on my keyboard and do a circle. Now I'm just gonna throw in a circle right there. You notice it's automatically dimensioned to the line right here on this axis. You may not need it depending on your dimensions, but I'm going to go ahead, click the center of the circle, the sidewall there for dimension, and do 0 0.5. And then if we notice, when I try to dimension the other side, it's going to over constrain that sketch. That's because my circle here is dimensioned to be on or coincident with this diagonal line right here. But that's everything we need, and we are good to, to go. I don't know why. There we go. Let's go back in here. For some reason, uh, it was holding, there was just a freeze right there. Every once in a while, Fusion likes to lock up on me. All right, we got the circle in there. We've got its position correct. We now need to dimension its diameter or its, uh, or its radius. But since it's a full circle, it's gonna do diameter of half an inch. There we go. Next thing I'm gonna do is I hit the R key on my keyboard and just overall kind of approximate what that rectangle looks like. Hit D on my keyboard for dimension, and we're gonna, it's gonna be a height of uh, three divided by four. So you can just type in three divided by four. And then an overall width of half an inch. Now the distance between this sidewall here is going to be a quarter inch, so 0 0.25 and the dimension from the bottom of this to that bottom line is going to be 0 0.25 as well. Alrighty, I think we are fully dimensioned and we can tell because every single line in my sketch right now is dark. If it's a light blue color, that means there's some dimension not defined yet. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and finish sketch and I'm gonna extrude this back one inch. So extrude and we're gonna do one inch. We can't quite see right here, so I'm gonna rotate just a little bit and then hit okay. All right, we've made our part. Now, if you notice my part originally was blue and how did I do that? I just highlighted everything, hit the A key for appearance. Appearance is gonna pop over here. I'm gonna type in whatever color you want. Let's do red for this next one. Click, drag, drop, done. And we now have an appearance of aluminum glossy red. Okay. All right, now that I've got my part, let's go ahead and make the drawing file of it as well. So the next thing I'm gonna do is you're gonna save. I'm just gonna call this drawing three. If we're gonna stick with the annotation we've talked about in class, let's do activity 1.2.4, uh, drawing three, and then first initial last name, so A. Williams. Click okay. And then now let's make a drawing so we'll click down here on this drop down right here, file, new drawing from design. So we want to make a design, a drawing from this design. We're going to click on a template. You can do from scratch if you haven't made a template yet, or you can use a template file. If you're in my class, you should have one for inches and one for millimeters. This is in inches. So I'm going to click on that, click OK. And here we go. It's going to ask me to bring in my base view. So I'm going to click on my base view. I'm probably going to increase the size of this. So let's make it a two to one and then click OK. Now we're going to click up here projected views and we're going to click on a top right click 
hit OK. Next thing we do is throw in my isometric view. And so what I'm going to do is click on Base again. We're going to click on Base View. Scale 2 to 1. And then the view we're going to look at is Northeast Isometric. That way you can see your front, right, and top views uh, easily. We're going to make that a shaded view. And there we go. The only thing I'm missing here is my dimensions. So if we're going to go all the way and finish up dimensions, same thing as before. I'm going to hit the D key and throw in my dimensions as needed. Now, uh, Fusion does a pretty good job of predicting what dimensions you want to include. Just make sure that when you're doing your dimensions, you still follow good protocol. You notice I'm not over-dimensioning, so I'm not going to throw any dimensions up here except for what you can't see in your front view, and that is the depth. I guess width if we're looking at it this way. And then we're also going to dimension this. So we got that. And oh, let's do dimension this side wall right here to that wall, 0.25. And then last one right here. And while well, I'm missing a couple things, one of those things are my center marks for my circle and my center line on my top view. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, that'll be our part for activity one, two, four, drawing three. If you got any questions, let me know. Good luck.